When we consider the visual disability, the first thing you should know is that all visually impaired children are not equal. Many visually impaired children have some sight remaining. For so many teachers, the word blind may mean that the student sees nothing at all and as a result, they may not make the effort to provide the teaching environment visually interesting for these learners. Various report and researchers reveal that only around 5% of them have no sight at all and the rest have some sight remaining. The remaining sight varies from one individual to another. Variations exist in the causes of visual impairment. Based on the eye diseases, the structure of impairment varies. Variation also exists in severity of visual disability, whether it is mild or moderate or profound visual disability and also the way it affects what the individual can see. It indicates if the vision is at the peripheral side only or only having central vision or the vision is overall blurry. Due to these variations, visually impaired persons might be able to see things in different ways to one another even if they share the same eye condition. There is no doubt that visual impairment increases the difficulties when they try to understand the world around them. As the teaching and learning environment relies heavily on visual cues, things might become more complicated. So, the educationists have to look for possible ways to meet the educational needs of the visually impaired learners. Researchers stated that 85% of the yearly learning is visual. Typically, the sighted children observe people and events around them. Young children with visual impairments miss out on receptive visual learning and often have cognitive gaps in understanding of how the world works. Additionally, their motor and language development is often delayed and they may take longer time to reach key developmental milestones. The learning of visually impaired child is through bits and pieces. For example, the teacher teaches the concept of pet animal, say a cat, through stuffed model cat. In learning, the visually impaired child has to perceive an idea through structure rather than form as in the case of sighted children. The child learns the structure of ears, tail and body but unable to perceive the whole form because the whole form cannot be perceived by touch as it is seen by the vision at a glance. Hence, the learning of visually impaired is bits and pieces or mediated learning. Students with visual impairment are unable to rely on their sight for learning and use other senses such as touch and hearing to learn. Children who were born blind have many gaps in their knowledge of the world. When a five-year-old blind child who used to come to school by bus was asked by the teacher to describe the bus, she described it on her left palm drawing two horizontal lines and one vertical line as shown in the figure. She explained that one horizontal line is at the bottom is a step. Vertical line is the pole I hold on to as to get on the bus and the next horizontal line is a seat. No wheels, no windows. It is a bus in her understanding. This example certainly shows a lot more than just a gap in the child's knowledge. It shows how much the teacher has to learn about visually impaired children. One blind mother who has raised three blind children to successful adulthood says, expect the blind child to learn the same things as any other child, but realize that he or she may need to be taught differently. A sighted child learns many things by imitation, imitating speech, body positions, attitudes. Some of these such as speech are non-visual and will not be any different for the blind child. But in matters such as hand coordination, we need to arrange an alternative
to visual imitation. For example, a sighted child sees adult using spoon in a conventional way, soon the child is trying to imitate, often getting the food spilling all over himself and around him but still imitating. Gradually, the child's imitation becomes closer and closer to the norm. If the sighted child is reminded, hold a spoon right, the child can look around and see how others are doing it. But the blind child will do poorly on such things because he cannot see what others do and imitate. We would instead provide a way for him to learn. We should help him to observe tactually the motions of others and we also move his body through motions as appropriate. While teaching how to use spoon, guide his hand to help him examine the spoon with fingers. Help him examine how it is held in your hands, how it enters his mouth. He might keep his hand on the spoon as you move it. With this approach, a series of gradual steps, the child begins to use spoon to feed himself. In the similar way, the activities which need vision to perform can be taught. The child can easily be helped to observe tactually while others performing a task and then can be helped to begin it himself. As stated earlier, blind children often have great gaps in their understanding. Suppose in a family of two children, one child is sighted and the other is a blind child. The father commutes by train each morning as his wife and two children wave goodbye. The sighted child sees the train and gains a reasonable understanding of how their father is transported. But the blind child will learn nothing except that dad has left with something noisy called a train. Hence, care should be taken to teach visual concept in a sequential manner. What does the teacher have to do in the classroom for the visually impaired child? It is important to consider the visually impaired child as a child first with all of the growing up problems of other children and then see as a child with visual impairment. There will be some pretty visually impaired children and some who are not so pretty as with other children. Some visually impaired children may feel shy and some will be aggressive as with all other children. Some will be dependent and others will want to be independent to do things on his or her own. The visually impaired children are expected to follow the same standards of behavior expected of his or her peers. The visually impaired child needs to be accepted but not pampered, loved but not petted and understood but not tolerated. Clearly, the lack of vision significantly affects learning. The unique educational needs created by the visual impairment are summarized as vision loss can result in delayed concept development which without effective intervention severely impacts the student's social, emotional, academic and vocational development. Students with visual impairment often must learn through alternative mode using their other senses. Students with visual impairments often require individualized instructions since group instructions for learning specialized skills may not be provided in a meaningful manner. Students with visual impairment often need specialized skills as well as specialized books, materials and the equipment for learning through alternative modes. Students with visual impairments are limited in acquiring information through incidental learning since they are often unaware of subtle activities in their environment. Measurable academic success is not the sole goal of the visually impaired children, but these people can be provided with the means of achieving their optimum potential which require careful consideration. They need clarity of instruction from their teachers. Gestures and other forms of non-verbal communication can be indistinct or lost to these children, whereas the sighted children have the opportunity of noting almost incidentally many visual signals which reinforce verbal explanations. The classroom should enrich classroom experience to all children. When a visually impaired child is in the classroom, care should be taken. Teachers working with a visually impaired child for even a little while can make some simple adaptations 
which may be helpful to improve and enrich classroom experience for all children. Here are some specifics for classroom teacher. The teacher should be more verbal in the classroom. Verbal description will help the child interpret what is going on in the classroom. While calling the children, instead of pointing out as you or she, the teacher should use names. For example, the teacher can say, Dinesh, can you answer to this question? The teacher should provide precise verbal description in a place of vague statements and motions when modeling an action. For example, the teacher can say, fold the paper lengthwise. Instead of saying, fold the paper like this, the teacher may explain his or her routine a bit to help the blind child interpret the situations which he or she cannot see. The teacher can say, I am so happy you are all being quiet and I am doing the record work. At this situation, the visually impaired child will understand that the teacher is doing some writing work. The teacher has to verbalize what is being written on the board or on the overheads and also spell out words when appropriate. When there is a picture in a storybook illustrating a plot, the teacher can give an additional explanation. This will help the visually impaired child to convert the visual experience. When referring to objects, the teacher can think about attributes other than color such as size of the objects, its shape, weight, texture and location. The teacher does not need to hesitate to use normal words such as look or see. The visually impaired children in a primary school level, like all other children, have much to learn about classroom routine. Help the child learn the workings of the classroom. The teacher may need to teach the child to focus on the teacher facing where the teacher's noise comes from, to respond quickly to instructions and how to respond by raising the hand, answering aloud, answering in, in unison. How to determine what others in the room are doing. The child can ask his peer sitting next to him, listen to the teacher's command or listen to what others are talking or students are silent while they are writing. When and where to move in a classroom. During a group work or when the teacher leaves the class or during recess. To work at an appropriate pace, not lagging behind in completing the work, learn the unique skills to compensate the vision impairment and to be independent in the work. The teacher can help organizing the child's desk area and material storage area for maximum independence. The teacher can think of adaptation of materials or parts of the lesson when necessary. Whenever possible, the teacher can provide hands-on opportunities. These will make experiences more meaningful for the blind child. The teacher can model movements for songs and finger plays. The teacher can move the visual impaired child through the motions when she wants the whole class to learn the motion. Sighted children can get the benefit of watching and the visual impaired child can learn by experiencing his or her own movement. Most of the time, the visual impaired children want information and hence the teacher can think of offering information instead of help. Instead of getting an object for the child, for example, give the child a chance to find it by describing its shape, size and location. Then give the child enough time to explore and correct mistakes before giving more prompts. Above all, the teacher needs to understand and respect the skills of blindness, learn the general sequence of the skills, provide opportunities in the class for the child to practice and offer appropriate support as the child is working toward mastery. The teacher must understand braille reading and writing is the equivalent of print reading and writing. Information can be reliably perceived through the sense of touch. The blind child should be moving about more and more independently as time goes on using orientation and mobility skills. The child will learn to use sound, memory, mental mapping and various special tools and will learn to ask information when needed. It is important to remember that educational goals of students with visual impairment are essentially the same as those of all students. 
but in order to master these subjects often known as core curriculum and complete their school work as well as to eventually live and work independently children who are visually impaired usually need to learn an additional set of skills known as expanded core curriculum they are sometimes also referred to as disability specific skills or vision related skills because they are useful specifically for individuals who are visually impaired students with visual impairments require specific interventions and modifications of their educational programs expanded core curriculum which is abbreviated as ECC is essential because it addresses the knowledge and skills needed for students with visual impairment the expanded core curriculum provides a framework for instruction in a specialized set of vision related skills for students who are blind or visually impaired while students who are blind or visually impaired are expected to follow the same core curriculum as their sighted peers they are certain areas in which they need specific instruction because of their vision loss the core curriculum includes subjects such as language mathematics science social studies and physical education the ecc skills for the visually impaired students are compensatory or functional academic skills including communication modes orientation mobility social interaction skills independent living skills recreation and leisure skills career education use of assistive technology and sensory skills compensatory or functional academic skills including communication modes compensatory and functional skills include such as learning experiences as concept development spatial understanding study and organizational skills speaking and listening skills and adaptation necessary for accessing all areas of existing core curriculum communication needs will vary depending on degree of functional vision effects of additional disabilities and the task to be done children may use braille large print print with the use of optical devices regular print tactile symbols and recorded materials to communicate orientation mobility is another ecc skill skills to orient the visually impaired children to their surroundings and the mobility skills to enable them to move independently and safely in the environment such as human guide techniques using standard or adaptive long canes recognizing clues and landmarks moving through space by walking requesting assistance from sighted persons the social skills used by sighted children and adults have been learned by visually impaired persons by observing the environment and other persons and also behaving in a socially appropriate ways based on that information social interaction skills are not learned casually or incidentally by visually impaired persons as they are acquired by sighted persons social skill must be carefully sequentially and consciously taught to blind and visually impaired students as they are expected to respond appropriately and participate in actively in social situations which include shaking hands turning toward others when speaking or being spoken to using language to make a request decline assistance or express a need expressing emotion and affection appropriately participating appropriately in a conversation in various situations daily living skills are included in the expanded core curriculum it consists of all the tasks and functions individually perform in accordance with their abilities in order to lead lives as independently as possible these curricular needs are varied as they include skills in personal hygiene food preparation money management time monitoring organization the sighted students acquire these skills and knowledge by casually and incidentally observing and interacting with the environment that are difficult for the visual impaired students the visual impaired students learn these skills with the direct sequential instruction by trained persons recreation and leisure skills are to be ensure students enjoyment of physical and leisure time activities which include making choices about how to spend leisure time participating in physical and social recreational activities 
finding out new leisure activities, following rules and games and activities at an appropriate level, maintaining safety during leisure activities. The teaching of recreation leisure skills to visually impaired students must be planned well and deliberately taught and must focus on development of lifelong skills. There is a need for general vocational education which is offered in the traditional core curriculum. In addition, there is a need for career education offered by specifically for blind and visually impaired students. Many of the skills and knowledge offered to all students through vocational education can be of value to visually impaired students. The skills that enable students who are visually impaired to move toward working as an adult are exploring career options, expressing preferences about work roles, assuming work responsibilities at home and school, participating in job experiences, learning about jobs and adult work roles at a developmentally appropriate level. Technology is a tool to enhance learning. It is not in reality a curriculum area. However, it is added to the expanded core curriculum because technology occupies a special place in the education of blind and visually impaired students. Technology enhances communication and learning. It expands the world of blind and visually impaired persons in many significant ways. Therefore, technology is considered as a tool to master and is essential as a part of the expanded core curriculum. These include skills to use devices, computers or other electronic equipment that make it easier to function effectively in a school, at home and in the workplace. Sensory efficiency is another expanded core curricular skill. Sensory skills that help students use senses including any functional residual vision, hearing, touch, olfactory, that is smell and gustatory, it is a sense of taste. Sensory efficient skills the child may learn include using visual aids, spectacles, magnifiers, telescopes, using augmentative and alternative communication devices, example computer with a speech software and tape recorder, using touch and vision to identify personal items, for example, identifying clothes, touch combined with vision is used, using senses of smell as a clue to know the location of a particular place, for example, identifying hospital through medicine smell, the responsibility for performing a functional vision assessment for effective visual utilization, planning appropriate learning activities and instructing students in using their functional vision in effective and efficient ways is clearly an area of the expanded core curriculum. The unique educational needs of all students with visual impairment cannot be met in a single environment even with unlimited funding. It is critical that a team approach be used in identifying and meeting these needs and the team must include staff who have specific expertise in educating students with visual impairments, classroom teacher, paraprofessional, peers and parents.